The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. With so many people living longer, the fear of outliving your money becomes a reality for many of us. Will I be a financial burden? Will I outlive my money? How will I be remembered? My name is Neil Himmelstein, president of Main Street Planning Group. Please contact me by visiting MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. I will introduce you to strategies that will guarantee you will not outlive your money, that can guarantee you will not be a burden on your loved ones. Through a collaborative approach, we will uncover solutions that offer tax-efficient strategies, lifetime income, and legacy planning. Choice, organization, direction, and and education. That is the code we stand behind. Contact MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. And listen to me every Friday at 3 p.m. as I host the Main Street Code for Financial Success right here on 103.9 LI News Radio. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. I'm here every Friday at 3 o'clock, and we talk about our code, which is choice, organization, direction, and education. And we help hundreds of advisors across the United States, whether they're CPAs or attorneys, or you with with your life insurance needs, long-term care, annuities, disability, We are experts in all these different areas, and we have agents coming to us on a daily basis uh, with problems with uh, different areas, whether it's underwriting or their carrier doesn't have the right product, and we we provide solutions for everyone. Uh, Today, I really want to talk about why people buy life insurance. You know, it's, it's, um, it's funny because as you go through life, you meet some people who have it, some people who don't. They, I don't know why they buy it, why they don't, but I want to give you the five reasons uh, why people buy life insurance. Um, financial protection for your loved ones. I mean, if you have any loved ones, I mean, this is, this is the hugest thing it can do. It's a safety net. Uh, it's a safety net for dependents. Uh, if your kids are, you know, you want them to go to college or whatever and that they have something they can afford to do that or for your children or for your aging parents. Uh, In case someone passes it away, it can cover mortgage payments, educational costs, daily living expenses. Now, this is a thing that I think uh, we'll get into in a little bit later. It's uh, daily living expenses and how to cover that. Debt repayment, big reason why people buy life insurance. Uh, You may have gotten a letter when you bought your first house or when you bought a house about... uh, Having mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is just really life insurance. So what happens if I take out a mortgage and, you know, today, you know, if I put down $100,000 and I buy a house for five hundred or $600,000 mortgage, I have a loan for $500,000. Now, what happens if something happens to me uh, and my spouse, if I'm married or something else, Where's the money going to come from to pay that mortgage? That's a big deal. Anytime you buy a business or, or real estate or an investment property, it's always good to have that insurance piece in place so that it will cover that. Uh, income replacement. This is the biggest deal I can possibly talk about why buy people buy life insurance. Now, you may say, and I've heard people say to me, well... You know, I have enough assets, my wife can live, and this and that. Or, And I'm saying, so what's paying for that mortgage every month? What's paying for the lights, the bills? Is it your savings or is it your income? And people have to look at, most times, you're paying your bills through your income, not necessarily through your savings, because at some point your savings will run out. So how much savings do you have to pay the mortgage, the lights, the this, the education, and everything else? So income replacement is a huge reason for buying life insurance. Funeral expenses, you know, final expenses. Uh, what happens if someone needs to bury me and take care of things? That's a big reason why people buy it. Business continuity. 
What happens if me or my partner or something passes away? What happens to my business if I don't have some sort of insurance to take care of it? Business continuity is a huge reason for buying life insurance. It's also good to have disability insurance, which will act as an income replacement that will, you know, keep the business going and or keep my family going. So that's another reason to buy insurance. Estate planning and taxes. So life insurance has some great tax protection when it comes to it grows tax deferred. There's a tax free death benefit. If you have in a situation where you're going to be paying estate taxes, you want to set it up maybe in a trust uh, or another party. And that can be a big cash source so you don't have to pay income taxes. And you don't have to have a huge estate to have to pay taxes. You know, a lot of people do really well in accumulating money in their IRAs and 401ks and 403bs. And the problem with that is if you don't use that money as income, it becomes income taxable to your heirs and could be estate taxable to your heirs. So all that money you saved up in these what we call qualified accounts could be a tax. A way of offsetting that tax is to buy life insurance. Now, We've gone through many programs where we talk about different types of life insurance, but today I really want to talk about what is the differentiating thing with cost. And the, one of the biggest things that people don't think about is underwriting. And underwriting is very important. If you don't know what underwriting means to your cost or your price of life insurance, let me just explain it this way. If you own a car... And you have a speeding ticket and you have points or you get in an accident. What happens? Your cost of insurance goes way up, correct? Or you have an accident on your house, in your property. Well, the same thing works with life insurance. So if you have some issues with your health, and listen, let's face it. We live a lifetime, but we're not perfect. You know, we may have high blood pressure. We may have high cholesterol. We may be overweight. We, we may have cancer, we may have this, we may have that. Things happen to us, you know, we might have infections. I mean, this, this just happens in everyone's life. How does that affect life insurance? Well, it affects the price. Because the healthier you are, the lower the price. Now, underwriting is different across the board. What we are specialists is in underwriting. And why is that important? Well, I'll give you a great example. Yesterday, I had someone approach me, and he works with, uh, used to be Farm Family, it's American National. Well, their company right now no longer writes term insurance, okay? And we find that with a lot of companies, especially career companies. They may not cover certain products. So then they come out to us and say, okay, give us a company that's going to work, now, this particular gentleman had to go to another company like mine, only they're much larger in scope. They don't take the individual pride in doing what I'm doing. And this gentleman had some problems with heart problems or this and that, and he was rated, so his price was going to be much higher, and they went to one or two or three different carriers. Uh, but what I find is, and this is across the board, what insurance companies has done over time is when I started in the business, and truly this is the differentiator for why you work with Main Street Planning Group and why you work with me. When I started in the business, we used to ask clients health questions up front. We ask if there's any health issues. We ask what type of medicines you take. We ask what you're doing about your overall health. The new applications that have come down the pike over the last five years, 10 years, have gradually taught us not to ask those questions. So a lot of people don't ask those questions up front. They think they're too personal to talk to the person about, and they let, allow the insurance company to do their own investigation. Well, when you allow the insurance company to do their own investigation, and you don't disclose some ailments... That insurance company thinks that maybe you're hiding the truth and they look for more things and they may even not offer you insurance or they may 
rate you and charge you a much higher price. When we talk about rating, we talk about a much higher price because you're rated. So that is a problem. So what we like to do is we ask the questions up front and we try and mitigate any situations that are out there. So it's okay to have high blood pressure if you're under a doctor's care and you take blood pressure medication. It's okay to have high cholesterol if you're under a doctor's care and you take cholesterol mocha. It's okay to have sleep apnea if you're compliant with CPAP. But there's many situations where the doctor says you need to see a sleep doctor and you don't see them and guess what? The insurance company doesn't give you a good offer. So knowing what you know up front is vital. And then knowing how to get the right case, we're going to talk about after our break because I think it's so important to understand the mechanics of what we do. You're listening to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. If you'd like to get a hold of me, it's 631-647-4694. I'm Neil Himmelstein, and we're going to be right back right after the break. Welcome back to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. Again, I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. If you want to reach out to me, 631-647-4694 or catch me on the web, themainstreetcode.com. And if you missed an episode, I'm on Apple and Spotify, as well as YouTube videos on my website at themainstreetcode.com. Anyhow, before the break, we were talking about underwriting when it comes to life insurance. And the reason I'm talking about underwriting is because a lot of people, many people are very price conscious. We're all taught to be price conscious. I'm price conscious too. I want to, you know, have the best value for my dollar. Not necessarily the cheapest price is necessarily the best value. So the newer agents today, and you know, I'm old school, I hate to say it, but Old school is good school. We were taught to be life, what we call underwriters. We were taught to be field underwriters, meaning let's find out ahead of time if we're sitting with a client or, or, or a person and find out what their ailments are, what medicines they're taking, and also point out some of the good points about somebody's lifestyle. Very important. So what happens is agents today... And forget about the online people. We'll talk about them in a second. Agents today are not taught how to do that. So agents today, either one, they work for a company that's only going to sell their company product, which is can be detrimental to you because you will not necessarily get the best offers of of the best price. Two, you'll go to an online person who says they can give offer you all these different companies and it's going to be the best price, but they don't do field underwriting. And field underwriting is key. So with field underwriting, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you the questions about your health. We want to see if you have any speed bumps in your health past. And we want to look at your lifestyle. All this is very important because... If you don't do that, if you call up 1-800-INSURANCE, what they're going to do is go to your medical records and your doctors uh, with your consent, of course. They get you consent, and they'll find out information that you may or may not have told them or you may have forgotten about. Very common. Oh, I forgot to take that drug. Oh, I forgot. Well, the first thing an underwriter is going to assume is that person is not telling me the whole truth. And that will prevent you from getting a good offer. So you can actually destroy yourself with not getting a good offer. Now, if you get an offer that you don't think you deserve from even a direct agent or somebody you got online or something else, that insurance company reports you to what's called the Medical Information Bureau or MIB, not Men in Black, Medical Information Bureau. I say that men in black because I keep saying MIB and I go, oh, I've seen all the shows and I'm a big fan. But anyhow, the Medical Information Bureau will record any time you've taken out an insurance policy and you've had a declination or they discovered that you had a 
heart condition, sleep apnea, cancer, whatever it is that they're going to ding you for, or you had a bad back and they don't want to give you disability insurance, whatever it is, that company reports it to the Medical Information Bureau so that when you go to reapply to a different company, that company has that information and that's all they know about you. Our approach is completely different and it's old school and we do it most of the time, if not all the time, at least when you're dealing direct with me, if you're dealing with one of my agents, some of them do it. Most of them, we try and train them to do it. And that's two things. One, you do field underwriting. You find out about the person ahead of time. Rather than going to a 1-800, I'm going to a robot to underwrite my life insurance, you go to a real person, and the real person's going to find out what's medically wrong, what's medically right. Because when they underwrite an insurance policy, First off, some companies are more lenient towards certain ailments than other companies. That's A. So pricing is going to differ from company to company because of your medical background, not necessarily what they post online because not everybody is best class, super preferred, and walks on water. None of us really walk on water. But So the first thing we do is we ask you medical questions and we get a good idea about you, but we also want to know about you. And your lifestyle. You know, we write a cover letter for every application. What's a cover letter? I mean, I talk to agents every day. They don't even know what a cover letter is. This is old school stuff. Underwriters really appreciate a cover letter. And here's what a cover letter does. A cover letter tells me, I met with John Smith today. John Smith is a family man. He helps out at the church and teaches the kids basketball. He works out every day, or he walks three miles a day, or two miles a day, or twice a week, uh, and he's very active with his community. All of a sudden, I've done two things. One, I've humanized John Smith to the insurance company. So now when an underwriter looks at this, not 1-800, I'm gonna put you in a computer, they, they get a feeling for, oh, I know John Smith, or I know somebody like John Smith. They All of a sudden, they're feeling good, just like a college application. You want them to say, okay, I know this guy. Okay, we realize John's a little overweight, but, he, but he, he, he's been on a diet, and he takes care of himself, and this is how he's addressing that. Okay, so the underwriter, they're going to give him a ding for having the wrong BMI or being overweight, but all of a sudden they go, Okay, it's not so bad. He's a few pounds overweight, but he's doing something about it. He's got high blood pressure, but he's been under medication for a year, and now it's normal. That's okay. That's not even rateable. Everybody thinks, oh, I got high blood pressure. I got to lose. I... No, it's not. But we explain it up front. Okay, he has sleep apnea. Okay, but it's mild. Is it severe? Is it moderate? Well, it's mild sleep apnea. The doctor recommended he go and and have a CPAP, but he's CPAP compliant. So he uses a machine every night to moderate his sleeping. Okay, that's not a problem. You know, what is a problem is you go to the doctor, and I've seen this every day I see this, and doctor sa- the doctor says, oh, my, wa- my wife's complaining because I snore a lot. Okay, well, you really should have a sleep study. Okay. Yeah, but it's okay. He doesn't do it. Well, all of a sudden, you get declined for life insurance. Why? Because the doctor said you need to go to a sleep study, and he puts it in his notes. If you don't follow up and do that sleep study, guess what? They're going to want to see that sleep study before they offer you insurance. Because it's very dangerous if you're not sleeping right. You could you could die in your sleep if you have sleep apnea. I happen to know this. Okay, I have mild sleep apnea. I know it. Okay, this is something, if you stop breathing when you sleep, I've known young people and older people that have died in their sleep, and that's one of the reasons. So if you're snoring and blah, 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 and you complain to the doctor about this, and then you don't follow up, they're not going to give you a great offer, and that's just the way it is. They're going to want to see that report, or if you say, oh, I'm going for an operation next week, and they find that in your reports, and you're having a major operation, and you don't report that, they're going to wait to see after the operation before they do that. But a lot of this can be handled in a cover letter up front. 
And a lot of these little issues that, that are going to ring little bells to that underwriter or what I call red flags, you've already addressed them. You've already mitigated, you've already minimized the effects of negative impact on your coverage. What they also do is they underwrite by something called debits and credits. Just like you're, when you're doing your books and everything else, debits and credits. But when it comes to underwriting, they'll give you a ding for high blood pressure, but he's taking medication. Okay, I'm going to give you a credit for that. Oh, he's got high education. He graduated college, graduated grad school. Oh, they give you credits for that because they think this is good, healthy living. Good, healthy living. You get credits for working out, for eating properly, for having good habits. You get credits for that. So underwriting is vital to your price, and you're not going to get the best price by calling up 1-800-I'm-buying-life insurance. You're going to get it by calling Main Street Planning Group and calling me, Neil Himmelstein, at 631-647-4694. Please give me a call. Any of your concerns regarding life insurance, long-term care, annuities, disability, I'm the man to speak to. Happy to help you. Have a great day, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors.